in this lesson, we want to talk about geometric sequences and series. All right, so in our last lesson, we talked about the arithmetic sequence. And with that guy, we found that each term after the first one can be found by taking the preceding term and adding some fixed number to it. Okay, the fixed number was known as the common difference, right? We represented that with a lowercase d. Well, now we're going to be multiplying, okay? And so let me give you the official definition. A geometric sequence, which is also called a geometric progression, is just a sequence where each term after the first is obtained by multiplying now the preceding term by a fixed non-zero real number known as the common ratio, and we'll use an R to represent the common ratio. So you can eyeball this and see what's going on. As I go from negative 4 to negative 24, I multiply by 6. And this is going to be consistent. As we go from negative 24 to negative 144, multiply by 6. As we go from negative 144 to negative 864, we multiply by 6. So if you didn't see this by kind of eyeballing it, you could take two terms that are next to each other, take the term on the right, okay, and divide by the term on the left. So for example, if I took this term and this term, they're next to each other, take the one on the right, divide by the one on the left. So if I did negative 864 divided by negative 144, I would get positive six, okay? And that's what this little formula is gonna tell you here. So R equals, you've got your A sub N plus one over your A sub N. So if I kind of come back down here, if I write R equals, in this case, this is A sub four over, in this case, this is A sub three, okay? So again, you take two that are next to each other, the one on the right, okay, that has a higher value for n is going to go in the numerator. The one on the left, the one that has a lower value for n is going to go in the denominator, okay? And the same thing would go if I picked two other ones that were next to each other. Again, I could just take, let's say this one and this one. If I did, in this case, this is a sub three, right? a sub three over this one's a sub two. Well, now I'd get negative 144 over negative 24. Let me put r equals this, and this would be six as well. All right, now the next thing we're going to talk about, you might also be asked to find the nth term of a geometric sequence. There's a really easy formula you can use for this. So a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r, again, the common ratio, raised to the power of n minus 1. So again, this is going to match this. So let's look at an example real quick. So we're given this kind of list of terms here. We want to find a sub 9 and a sub n. So this is the formula for the general term, and this is a sub 9. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, let me just go back up here and grab this formula real quick. So a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to the power of n minus 1. So let me write that off to the side. So we have a sub n, okay, is equal to a sub 1, and then we're going to multiply this by r raised to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so let's start with a sub 9. So we have a sub 9 is equal to, let me make that a little better. And we know that a sub 1 is the first term from the sequence, right? This is a sub 1, this is a sub 2, you know, so on and so forth. This is, let me go ahead and write this in. So this is a sub 3 and this is a sub 4. Well, we know that a sub 1 is 1. Then times, what's r? Well, again, I could just grab two terms that are next to each other. So let me grab a sub 4 and a sub 3. So again, if I grab this and this, I take the one on the right, the one with the higher index value, and I divide by the one on the left, the one with the lower index value. So r is equal to a sub 4 over a sub 3, which is negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2, okay? So I'm going to put negative 2 here for r. Now, this is very important. When you have a negative, you need to wrap it inside of parentheses. Don't put negative 2 like this because negative 2, the negative and the 2 are raised to the power of n minus 1. So wrap it in parentheses. Okay, make sure you do that. Now, what is n minus 1? Well, in this case, again, n, this right here matches this right here. So 9 is what goes in there. So 9 minus 1 is 8. Okay, so all we need to do now is just crank this out and we're done. Right, so negative 2 to the 8th power is going to be 256, right? Because again, the negative and the two are inside of parentheses, so it's all raised to the eighth power. So this would be one times 256, which is just 256. So let me write this over here. So a sub nine is equal to 256. Okay, so what about a sub n? And some people get confused by this because you're given this formula here and you're like, well, a sub n equals this. Well, no, you need to plug in things from the problem that you're given, right? So you need to plug in your a sub 1 and your r, okay? So all I'm going to do is say that a sub n is equal to, my a sub 1 again is 1, 
and then times your r, in this case is negative two. And if you don't wanna put the one there, it doesn't matter, but I'm just putting it for completeness. So I'm gonna put negative two here for my r, and then my n minus one here, okay? So whatever term you'd wanna find, let's say you wanted the 10th term, plug in a 10 there, plug in a 10 there, evaluate, and you're good to go. Okay, so you can do that with any term of this sequence. Okay, let's look at something a little bit more challenging. And I'm gonna tell you there's lots of ways to solve these. I'm gonna show you the way that I do it. This is the quickest way that I've found, but if you have a better method, that's fine too. So we have a sub three equals 48 and a sub six equals negative 3072. We wanna find a sub nine and a sub n. So let's start with a sub nine. Now, we don't have two terms that are next to each other, so we can't do the formula for R that we're used to. But we can kind of look at our general formula. So we know that a sub n is equal to, we have a sub one times our R raised to the power of n minus one, okay? So what I wanna do is just plug some things in real quick. And I'm gonna show you that you can basically set up a system with two equations and two unknowns, and you can solve for what you need, okay? And again, there's other ways to do this, but this is how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna plug in for a sub three, just to show you all the steps. I'm gonna put a sub three there. This would be a three, three minus one would be two, okay? And I know what a sub three is, it has a value of 48. Okay, so let's put that right there. So now we have 48 equals a sub one times r squared. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna do a sub six. So I'm gonna do a sub six, and I'm just gonna skip that step and plug in a negative 3072. And again, this would be a six, six minus one is five. Okay. Two equations, two unknowns, right? I need to find out a sub one, I need to find out r. So let me solve one of these guys for a sub one, okay? And I'm just gonna solve this top one. So I'm gonna say that a sub one is equal to what? I would just divide both sides by r squared. So 48 over r squared. Okay, so now I can take this, which is a sub one, and plug it in there. Okay, that's all I've gotta do. So I've got negative 3072 is equal to 48 over r squared times r to the fifth power. Okay, let me just erase all this, get this into a cleaner format. I can go ahead and get rid of this and say this is to the third power. Okay, and so what we'd have is what? 48 r cubed is equal to this negative 3072. We'll divide both sides by 48, and we're gonna get that r cubed is equal to negative 64. If I take the cube root of each side, let me make sure I put a three there, what am I gonna get? Well, this on the left would be r, and on the right, I would have negative four. So I know r is negative four, so let me just write here off to the side, r equals negative four. Well, I still need my a sub one, so let me erase this real quick. We had that solved for a sub one, so let me just do that again. We know that a sub one is equal to 48 divided by r squared. Well, we know that r is negative four, so negative four squared, again, if I'm plugging something in here and I'm squaring, I want the negative and the four wrapped in parentheses because it's negative four that's being squared, okay? So don't make that mistake. So this would be negative four squared, so this is 48 over negative four squared is 16, and 48 over 16 is three, okay? So now I have my a sub one and I have my r, so I'm ready to go through and find my a sub nine, okay? So my a sub nine, again, if you use the formula, let me just write this out. So a sub n is equal to, you've got your a sub one times r raised to the power of n minus one. So we know a sub one is going to be three. And we know that this is a nine here, okay? And we know this is a nine here. Let me make that a little bit better. We know this is a nine here. Nine minus one is gonna be eight. So what is r? It's negative four. Let me erase this and put negative four raised to the eighth power. Again, if you have a negative there, make sure you wrap it in parentheses. All right, so this answer is gonna be really big. If I punch it up on my calculator, I get 65,536. So we'll say a sub nine equals three times. Again, that was 65,536. And then we'll just do this multiplication and that'll give me 196,608. Okay, so that's my a sub nine. So a sub nine is equal to 196,608. Okay, so a sub n is really easy to do. Okay, so a sub n, let me just write this down here. So a sub n equals what? Again, it's a sub one, which in this case is three, times your r, which in this case is negative four, raised to the power of n minus one. All right, so now let's move on and talk about some of the problems you'll get with geometric series. 
So this first one is where we're just summing the first n terms of a geometric sequence. Again, this would be a geometric series. So you have your s sub n. Remember the n here is the value that you're kind of stopping at. So if it was s sub 10, well then I wanna sum the first 10 terms of that geometric sequence. So basically to do this, you have your a sub one here multiplied by one minus r raised to this power of n. Again, you got the same number there and there, and then it's over one minus r. Okay, so a real simple formula to use. And let's go down here. And we've written this in summation notation Hopefully you remember how to use this, how to read this. This is from n equals one to eight. It's the summation of three times, you have your negative two raised to the power of n minus one. So essentially the formula here for the geometric sequence, it's a sub n equals three. Okay, that's going to be your a sub one. And then times your negative two, that's your r raised to the power of n minus one. So again, this is your a sub one and this is your r, okay? So if I wanna use that formula, let me go back up to it for a minute. And you can copy this down real fast and I'll go back down. If you wanna use the formula, what I'll say here is that S sub eight, right? Because I'm going to that number there is going to be equal to what? Well, I'm plugging in, let me just kind of write this formula out. So it's A sub one times, it's one minus R raised to the power of N. Okay, so let me stop and fill this out. So R we know is negative two it's negative two. And we know that n in this case is eight. Okay, so I'm gonna put eight here. And let me just close that down. And then this is over, let me fill in a sub one, that's gonna be three, so let me put that there. It's over your one minus r. So your one minus, in this case, r again is negative two. Okay, so let me copy this real fast. And let me just paste this in so we have some room to work. Okay, so this is pretty easy, we're just evaluating things. So S sub eight is equal to, we have three times. If I did negative two to the eighth power, we know that's 256. And then we have one minus that, okay? And this is over one minus a negative two, which is one plus two or three. Well, before I do anything, remember this is three times this amount here. This can be canceled, right? Because this is multiplication. So I end up with just one minus 256, which is negative 255. Okay, so the sum of the first eight terms of that geometric sequence would be negative 255. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about would be the sum of the terms of an infinite geometric sequence. And basically this formula I'm gonna give you here is valid as long as the R that you're working with is greater than negative one and less than one, okay? If the absolute value of R is greater than one, then what's gonna happen here is you just write that you don't have a sum. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just go through this real quick. So this is S sub infinity. So as you keep summing these terms of your sequence, as you keep going forever and ever and ever, as you approach infinity, you get a value of A sub one over one minus R. Okay, so pretty easy to work with this formula. Let's look at an example. So we have the summation from K equals one to infinity of negative four thirds times this one fifth raised to the power of k minus one. So again, this is your a sub one, this is your r, okay? So when you look at your r value, is it greater than negative one and less than one? Well, yeah, this is one fifth. So this falls in the category where we're gonna get an answer from this formula. So what we're gonna do is just write this out. Let me just kind of see if I can fit this on the screen. My formula again, s sub infinity is equal to, you've got a sub one, which in this case is negative four thirds, okay, over, you've got one minus r, so one minus one fifth. So let me copy this again, we're just gonna run out of room here, there's just too much stuff on the screen. Okay, so the fastest way to solve this is just to find the LCD of all the denominators. So you've got a three and a five. So your LCD is gonna be 15, so I'm gonna multiply the top part by 15 and the bottom part by 15. So I'm just multiplying 15 by negative four thirds. Of course, the 15 would cancel with a three and give you a five, five times negative four is negative 20. Let me write that down here so we have some room. Then 15 times one would be 15. And then minus, if I did 15 times one fifth, the 15 would cancel with the five and give me a three. Three times one is three. So 15 minus three is 12, okay? And we know that there's a common factor here of four. So if I divide this by four, I get five. If I divide this by four, I get three. So the answer here would be negative five thirds.